Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, and I know lots of you already know me as Glenda the Good Stitch. I'd like to welcome you to our February live chat and wish you all a very warm Valentine's wish. I hope you all have a lovely day on Sunday. I've entitled this chat, Jingle Jangle, What's My Angle? And I'm going to be talking about the shoulder seam in our bodices and on our shirts, identifying some of the issues that can happen with your fit, and of course, how to fix them. You know, uh, when we started doing our live chats, it was like back in the fall of 2020. And uh, then we picked them up on a more regular basis in January this year. One of the things that I asked you to do was to send me in your suggestions for our chats. And I would like to thank all of you who have. I've got a short list going of the chat suggestions and um, I, I need topics that can be covered in, you know, 30 to 40 minutes here. And some of the suggestions come in, one of them, it was a really great, but it would take hours. And she said, Glenda, can you show us all the drag lines that could happen on our garments and then how to fix them? And I had to have a little chuckle and I emailed her back and I said, well, I'd love to do that, but I can't do that all in one chat. So as we do these chats and as they concern fitting issues, Yes, I will be showing you drag lines, what they mean, and how to fix them. And we'll talk specifically about shoulders today. And when you have suggestions for these chats, which I very much appreciate, please send them to info at surefitdesigns.com. That email address comes directly to me. The other thing that I asked you for were your photographs of your finished Surefit Designs garments. And again, send them to info at surefitdesigns.com. Those of you who came in ahead of the uh, starting time today likely saw our customer carousel. And those are all photographs that have come in since January. Thank you all so much for participating. And the reason that we want you to do this is number one, we want to show off your work. And number two is you are an inspiration to everybody else out there in SureFit Designs who might be afraid to take that first step to sew something, to make a, an actual garment besides their fitted bodice. So thank you, and again, please, the more photographs, the merrier. And just send them to me with a short little description saying, whichever kit you use, dress, pants, shirt, or children's kit, and then also um, let me know what you accomplished what you learned, something new that when you tackled that project. I always love hearing from my customers. And as our chats and broadcasts go on, then we will be changing out that carousel. Now, also in the first chat in January, I asked, um, and, and I guess I told you about our Sew and Tell program. Those of you who have been with SureFit Designs for a while know what I'm talking about for everybody who's new. Sew and Tell is um, a little, oh, shall I say, program that we set up that you can download a, a sewing planning guide for 2021, and it helps you uh, structure your thoughts about what you'd like to sew and how you need to gather together all your supplies, etc. And then we ask you to post your photographs in our Facebook group. And um, all you, you need to do is put on the hashtag uh, so and tell or me made. In the last few years, we also issued you a unique ID number. And I can't tell you how many times I got emails saying, what's my unique ID number? I've forgotten it or I've lost it. So this year we made so and tell even easier for you. We just said, all we want you to do is so with SureFit Designs, put your photographs up in our Facebook group and then put on that hashtag so and tell. And then we are going to have drawings throughout the year um, thanking you for your participation. Obviously, this is not a contest. It's not based on sewing construction or how complex your design is. It's simply to keep you sewing with SureFit Designs. And then we said we would draw lucky winners randomly throughout the year. And yesterday, Kelly and I drew our first lucky winner and she is Debbie Smith. 
Now, my understanding is that Debbie Smith is new to Surfit Designs and that she is in the UK. And so big congratulations to you, Debbie. And you are also one that sent us in the photograph of your very first wearable shirt. And you did a wonderful job of it. In fact, your photograph was in the carousel today. So as I say, Sew and Tell is there to inspire you to sew. And our carousel is for everyone to be inspired by what other normal people are doing with SureFit Designs. And so Debbie, what I'd like you to do is send me a quick email to info at SureFit Designs. What your gift is, is you can choose one of our digital fashion leaflets and you just need to send your information to me, um, choose the leaflet that you want, and I will give you the link so that you know where to go to choose your leaflet. And then I will send you the digital file on that. And again, Debbie, thank you so much for participating. We really appreciate your contributions. Now, throughout the chats, I always ask you to ask your questions. That's the whole purpose of doing these live chats, is to get your questions answered. And, <clears throat> excuse me, today we've got Kelly, my office assistant. She's in our other office answering questions. And then I think we have most of our international distributors with us today. In South Africa, it's 10 p.m. Elsabi may not be here, and I certainly understand that because it's late at night. But we have Judith in the UK, um, Anna in Canada, and Martha is in Australia. And I know in Australia, it, in uh, Queensland, it's 6 o'clock in the morning, and we just saw somebody check in to the broadcast who is in Western Australia. Welcome. I know that that's likely 4 o'clock in the morning for you. So we appreciate all of you throughout the entire world who have either woken up or stayed up long enough to join our chat today. Now, um, we try to do these once a month, but in March, we are going to be changing the format just a little bit. We're going to be offering you a streaming broadcast. And you might ask, well, what's the difference between a streaming broadcast and a live chat? Well, number one, the streaming broadcast is more in-depth, very focused. It's going to be a minimum of 90 minutes long, and we are going to focus completely on this time coming up on the pants pattern with SureFit Designs. There is a nominal fee of $15 to help cover our production costs, and a little bit later in today's chat, I'm going to be giving you all the details of where to go and register for our March 20th broadcast on pants. And so um, the next thing that I like to do is talk about what's new. And this year, or this year, this February, what's new is that I have a new supply of erasable pencils that are coming into the United States. And I do apologize in the last chat um, I introduced these pencils. They are bar none the best erasable pencil that I have ever used in my years and years of pattern work. And it's because they make a nice crisp line and they are totally erasable. And when I announced them in our last chat, within no time, the inventory that I had was sold out. And I do apologize for that. I have tripled the amount of inventory coming in, and this time it's coming in from Europe to Australia and then to me. And I want to thank Martha very much for her helping me source these colored pencils and bring them into the United States. These pencils are simply not available on a regular basis in North America. I have talked with this company and they discontinued this particular pencil a number of years ago, and that's why Anna in Canada and myself in the United States need to import them. So when we run out, we just will put up a little sold sign, and then I don't like to let you continue to purchase them until I know I have more stock coming in. And today I received notification that my stock should be here on Monday afternoon. And so as the notice in my website says, we will be shipping back orders 
between February the 15th and the 28th. And again, thank you all so much for your patience. For those of you who would now like to order them, they are available until I run out again. But as I said, I've got triple the stock and I'll, uh, I will definitely be using these in the demonstration today. So let me inspire you with our jingle jangle, what's my angle? And here we're going to be talking about shoulder seams. Now, as we age and our bodies change, we have a tendency to have our shoulder seams fall back on us. So if, if you were wearing um, your test garment that's got a jewel neckline like this and it's kind of like choking you, or if you were to scoop the neckline out and you kind of notice that everything is like falling to the back, usually that means that you need more length in the back of your bodice and you need to bring that shoulder line forward and then bring the front shoulder line forward in conjunction with the back. So the whole thing is coming forward. And then you might have sloping shoulders or you might have square shoulders. And you say to me, well, Glenda, what alteration do I do first? And so we will be addressing that. But first of all, I would like to show you an illustration of shoulder lines. And so on this illustration here, we've got this up on the screen now, you'll see that this black outline, this is our, what I'm calling normal or average shoulder. The green line is our square-shouldered person, and the red line is our sloped-shouldered person. Now, how do you identify these on your body? Well, let's think about this. If you're looking at the body, and the neck comes down like this, and then you kind of almost have a right angle at your neck point, and you go straight out, you're square-shouldered. On the other hand, if your neck comes down, and then your shoulders kind of slope off like a ski jump, then you're slope-shouldered. Now, over my, gosh, 10 years of giving fit and sew retreats in Oregon, usually I offered the retreat anywhere from four to six times a year, and usually I would have anywhere between five and six women attend. Now, you add them all up, in my 10 years, I saw an awful lot of women come through my door. How many women do you think had square shoulders? Well, I could count them on one hand, if there was even five. The most typical shoulder change that we needed to make was for a sloping shoulder. You might ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, think about our lifestyle. Number one, as you get married and have children, you're holding your babies like this. And if you're not holding babies, then you're holding sacks of groceries. And if you're not holding a sack of groceries, then maybe you've got a heavy handbag on your shoulder. Or maybe you're sitting over a computer and your shoulder is rocking forward. Or maybe you're sitting at your, at your sewing machine and your shoulders are rocking forward. I've noticed over the year on my body, about, I think it was four years ago, I needed to do a forward shoulder and a... Um, a tune-up on my shoulder bone because my shoulder was going forward. And one of the last garments I made, I put it on and I thought, hmm, I think I need to change my shoulder line again because as I'm aging, I'm getting even more rounded. So be aware that this can happen to anybody and that the situation happens because our bodies change, our bones change. And, but the nice thing is with SureFit Designs, when your basic body blueprint fits you and all it is is the shoulder issue, then we can just change it because you can change your pattern as your body changes. So let's take a look at the um, pattern right now and deal with this. So here's a bodice front and you can see that I've drawn off only one line because again, no seam allowances are on this. I don't want a lot of visually confusing lines for you. We also need to bring the back into play. And so here's the back bodice. And we can't just line our shoulder lines up like this because 
This is an armhole and this is a neckline. And here's a neckline and here's an armhole on the back. So because of the orientation of our patterns, in order to work on our, neck, our, our shoulder lines, you want to flip the back pattern over. So now when I put these shoulder lines together, what I'm seeing is a continuous line from the back armhole across the shoulder point, point and down into the front armhole. And at the neckline, you can see the curvature connects very smoothly at this neck point to the back neckline. Now, when you are, when you've drawn off your uh, pattern like this and you go to test it, before you cut your fabric out, I recommend you do what is called truing the pattern. And that is doing exactly what I'm doing right now, which is lining up the fronts and the backs at the shoulder line and making sure you've got smooth connections. And then there's a few other things that you need to check on as well. We have a video called Truing the Pattern, and I invite you to stay at the end of this chat, and we're going to play that video for you. I, I know that when we first put the video up in YouTube, that shortly thereafter, I had a customer email me and say, Glenda, I sure wish I'd have seen that video before I cut my fabric out because I know I didn't finish my pattern properly. I didn't get all my positions trued. So it would make very much a lot of sense for all of you to watch that short video at the end of this chat. But if you can't stay, I certainly understand that, but in the show more notes that are at the bottom of the, um, the uh, video that's playing right now, you will see, if you just click on show more, you're going to see some links there, and one of them is to truing the pattern. So one way or the other, make sure that you watch it. And so now you say, well, I've trued my pattern, I've cut my bodice out, I've sewn up my test bodice, and I think my shoulder line's falling too far backward. And how are you are going to know that is, of course, most of you already know that us as distributors, we invite you to send your uh, photographs to us if you need help with fitting. And one of the photographs we ask you to take is a downward angle or kind of a, an angle like this so that we can see where that shoulder seam line is sitting on your body. And then if it needs to come forward, we help you identify that. But you also might have a sloping shoulder as well, or a square shoulder. And then you say, well, I've, I've got a minimum of two alterations I need to do at my shoulder line. Which one do I do first? So that's what I'm going to address today. And the first uh, change that you will make is moving the whole shoulder line forward. We're going to do that because we need to establish a new neck point. So I'll just take my line drafter here, and on the shoulder line of the back bodice, I'm just going to say that we're going to move the shoulder line forward a quarter of an inch. So I've lined up the quarter inch marking on the line drafter with the back shoulder seam line, and then I'm going to draw my line, and I'm going to draw it in red. You can see how nicely you can see that red line. And I'm just going to continue up the neckline like this and the armhole in that position. Now, I need to do the same thing, but just the opposite on the front. Because I moved the back shoulder seam forward towards the front of your body, I need to take the shoulder line on the front bodice and I need to move it forward as well or call it down on the front of your body. So I'm lining up my quarter inch marking again on the line drafter with the shoulder line on the front, and I drew the um, new shoulder seam position on the front. Now we're also starting to get a lot of lines happening here. So what we want to do is erase 
And I drew this pattern off in the black that's out of this package right here. And you can see how nicely this is erasing here. And I'm just using the end of the pencil to erase. And one of the ladies who got her package of pencils in the first uh, group of inventory that I received, she's already emailed and she said, Glenda, is there another eraser we can use besides the end of the pencil? She says, I erase a lot and I know I'm going to wear that end out. And so I did some testing with two different kinds of erasers. This one, it says a high polymer eraser by the company Pentel, P-E-N-T-E-L. And it erases, but not as well, not as well. I guess if I rubbed a little harder, I could likely get it to come all off with that eraser. But this one I really like. It's Papermate, and it's called the Pink Pearl. So these are both readily available in the United States, and you can see how that just cleaned it up really nicely. So I want to erase on the back, but remember I flipped this back pattern over, so I have to go back to my front side, and I'll just use this pink pearl and erase that black line. So what I have done here, get rid of those eraser shavings, and what I've done here is now moved the whole shoulder seam line forward, and I'll just line these two red lines up like this, and they're still good. So that brought this forward. And what it's done is established a new neck point. So this is the first change that you would make if you have more than one to do on your shoulder line. Then you say, okay, Miss Glenda, I am sloped shouldered. And so now we have to remove at the shoulder line. So let's take a look at the drag lines that are caused by somebody being sloped shouldered. And we'll take a look at that on this pink bodice. So if somebody is sloped shouldered, the drag line is going to be like this. It's going to have a distinctive fold from the underarm going up towards the neckline like that. And if I take the shoulder position and I pinch like this, can you see how that pinch at the shoulder bone removes that diagonal drag line? So now you have to translate that in onto the pattern. But before I do, let's take a look at this blue bodice and say, I'm not sloped shouldered, I'm square shouldered. So what does that drag line look like? So this drag line, let me get my position going the right way, this drag line would look like that. So now it's exactly the opposite of what I just showed you on the pink bodice. So now the drag line emanates or comes from the center front and goes up to the shoulder bone. The way to remove that drag line is to pinch it at the neckline, and what that does is when you pinch up here, sorry my arm was in the way there, but when you pinch up at the neckline, it alleviates that drag line that was coming from center front. Now this bodice fits the mannequin, so it's really a little bit more challenging for me to form that drag line and then to get rid of it with this pinch here, but how much ever you pinch up at the neckline is what you would then add to the shoulder bone in order to make a square shouldered tune-up. So now we're going to do the most common tune-up, which is the sloping shoulder. And I will use a different color. So now we're going to say that the pinch that I did here to lift that drag line out, let's say I pinched up 3 eighths to half an inch. So that's what I need to remove from the shoulder position. So let's look down at the table again. And we're going to say that I need to do a half an inch change at the shoulder bone. So we'll come in and make a half inch marking there and 
a half inch marking here. And I'm doing it in blue so you can distinctively see the difference. So I'm going to join that point up to the new neck point. It will look like that. And I'll do the same thing, slope the shoulder on the back. So it will look like this. Again, now I've got more lines than I want to have in place. So I will just use the eraser on the end of the pencil or, of course, my pink pearl. And even with as, as strong as I made that pink line, you can see that it's being erased really, really nicely. So what I've done here with this blue line now is I have sloped the shoulder line on the pattern. Now, we are going to look at truing this, but in a moment we have to deal with one more very significant issue that just occurred. Because I sloped one half inch at the shoulder point, I now automatically shortened the depth or the length of that armhole. And you don't want to do that. You want to keep the armhole dimension the same. And that's because we don't want to have to change the sleeve. So because I sloped the shoulder point one half inch, I'm going to lower the underarm also one half inch. And I'm going to blend up. And I just usually freehand my initial drawing. I'm going to blend up like that into the armhole. Then take the designing stylus and I will true up this new curve. And for freehanding, that wasn't too bad. Got a nice smooth curvature coming there for the armhole. And then I will erase this line right here. So I have maintained exactly the same length of shoulder line. I didn't mean shoulder line, I meant armhole depth. And I must do that exact same thing on the back of the pattern. So I'll measure down one half inch, and then I'll just freehand this drawing, just this curvature, like that first of all. Then I will take the designing stylus and pull this in and true this up here. And now just turn this back over and erase the curvature that you don't want. So this totally maintained the same depth of armhole in the pattern that we started off with so that you don't need to make any changes per se to the sleeve. Let me move that out of the way for a minute. So now there is one thing we do need to do to the sleeve, but I'll talk about that in just a second. The, um, now what you want to do is true the pattern. So when I put these two blue lines together, these are your new uh, shoulder positions and you've sloped the shoulder, you can see that as I come up my front armhole that I've got a bit of a V happening right here. You can see that. And that would not sew well and let your sleeve set in without dragging at the top of the sleeve cap. So the whole purpose of truing the pattern before you cut the fabric is to then say, okay, we need to do a slight blending right here. I know it adds a little bit of extra length, but you're gonna see what happens at the neck point here in a minute. So you want a nice, smooth, continuous curve on that armhole. Now, at the neck point, my shoulder seam lines are exactly still the same length. If they're not, change them. Make sure that this ended up being exactly what you require for your shoulder seam. You can see that the front bodice comes like this and there's a little bit of a pointy V right there and I don't want that either. So I'm going to just smooth that curve off and it is in essence the same amount that I added right there. So I do maintain the same length of shoulder line completely but I have trued the pattern. So there's other areas in the pattern that you do need to true. Again, I encourage you to watch that, truing the, 
pattern video at the end of this chat. Now, I said basically there wasn't much you needed to do with your sleeve. Not if you just simply sloped or squared your shoulder because you are changing the dimensions of the armhole to be the necessary uh, dimensions that were established for your sleeve cap. However, on this situation, if you will remember, the very first thing that I did was I moved the shoulder seam forward, and that was done in this red pencil. Of course, I've re erased it right now, but because I moved the shoulder seam line forward one quarter of an inch, it means that the sleeve cap notch should also be moved forward a quarter of an inch. And there are directions in our learning center on how to do that. Now, our learning center, you go to sfdlearningcenter.com. I'll talk a, a little bit more about that in a moment. But when you get there, you're going to have a choice of the video library or the uh, article library. This is a circumstance where you want to go to the article library, and <clears throat> it is, it's either f.9 or f.19. It's one or the other. But I put the link for you um, in the show more section at the bottom of this video. So go to that link. It's on the forward thrusted shoulder bone. But what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to move the sleeve cap notch on the sleeve pattern in that particular article. So there you can see that the first change you're going to make is move the shoulder seam forward. Then you're going to either square or slope the shoulder. And then some of you might even have a protruding shoulder bone. Use yet a different color and make that change. These colored pencils, I know you are absolutely going to love them. And I should mention that you want to check with your distributor uh, for availability. I think most of all the SureFit Designs distributors have these colored pencils. You also might want to check with the teachers in the USA for availability as well. All right, well, that is basically the essence of the lesson today. And um, now what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about um, our promotions that we have for February. I know those of you who are familiar with Surfa Designs know that approximately once a month we do run a promotion and it's of some nature. We give you a little bit of a discount here or, you know, a buy one, get one 50% offer or uh, something like that. Well, because I ran out of colored pencils and my little mini bundles um, in the last live chat, we are able to offer you this little bundle again. And the little bundle consists of, I've called it a mini tape and pencil bundle. It consists of the package of colored pencils, also has the removable tape with it. You never have enough removable tape on hand. This is the most excellent product that I have found working with our tracing vellum and our master patterns. It doesn't rip the paper. It doesn't take off the surface of the uh, printing on our master patterns. It is absolutely excellent. And then the other thing that it includes is our uh, tape measure called our Easy Check Tape Measure. And this is a product that I introduced last time. And for those of you who are new to our, our chats, I would like to just review very quickly about this Easy Check Tape Measure. It is um, it, uh, white on one side that goes around your body. It's got the dimensions on the yellow side, both in inches and in metric. It has a plastic slide here, and the plastic slide has some resistance so that when it gets around your body, it'll stay put. But what is very unique about this is that at the end of this tape measure, there's a little red button. This is actually a snap. And at the back side of this plastic slide, there is a little hole where this snap goes in. And I'm just going to snap it and top stop talking. Did you hear that snap? So when this goes around your body, all you need to do is just snug this up ever so slightly, and this will stay around your body. That means you can do hands-free measuring. 
and it's, it's just unbelievable for all of us that can't get together with sewing buddies because of this pandemic that we are all still dealing with. This is the next best thing to a sewing buddy because you can do it all yourself. And if you haven't seen our video on the Easy Check Tape Measure, what I want you to do is go to What's New and how you find that in my website is surefitdesigns.com, home and then shop and then drop underneath shop and it's my second tab and you will see the video there showing you how to use the Easy Check Tape Measure. Well, this tape measure is included in our little mini tape and pencil bundle. And I had a customer the other day said, Glenda, I just love these little bundles that you put together and your combos. We so appreciate you doing that and giving us a bit of a discount on them. And we are happy to do that for you. Now, for the month of February as well, this is also our Valentine's special for you. We, as I said, we, we adopted this whole theme of making an in 2021 an inspirational year for you. And in that regard, a lot of you already have your SureFit Designs kits and vellums and line drafters and everything else. But what you really need is inspiration to be sewing and sewing your projects with SureFit Designs. And so our promotion for February for Valentine's is 20% off at our website, sofitacademyonline.com. Now, you will need to add in a coupon code, and it is VAL20, V-A-L, for Valentine's and 20 for 20% 20 off. So I'd like to talk a little bit about our three websites. Some people get really confused of why we have so many websites, and I'll just take a few moments and explain it. SureFitDesigns.com is our product website where you can go in. It's a regular online store. You can put in the line drafter and your roll of vellum and your stylus and your kits and check out all at one time and uh, buy a physical product from us in surefitdesigns.com. All of our distributors also have a website where you can buy the physical product. So in Australia, it's surefitdesigns.com.au. In Canada, it's surefitdesigns.ca. In South Africa, it's surefitdesigns.co.za. And in the UK, it's surefitdesigns.co.uk. And all of the distributors are carrying all of the, uh, the products. Um, you might want to check Elsabi in South Africa. I'm not sure that she's got the pencils yet, but be that as it may, um, they all carry the, the physical products um, for the most part. Let's put it that way. And then we have our learning center, and that is SFD for Surefit Designs, learningcenter.com. That's where we house all of our free articles and free videos. We have over 300 videos on fitting, designing, and sewing. They are a huge resource for you. They provide all kinds of educational information for you, and it's all complimentary. I had one of my customers say to me, Glenda, Going to the, the Learning Center is like my Wikipedia. I go there first whenever I want information on fitting. So I encourage you to use that resource. It's there. Anytime we put up new videos, they get put in the Learning Center, and um, I invite you to go there and look at it. And then our third website came about, which is the sofitacademyonline.com. You have to put the whole name into the window, the, your URL window, your browser window. And it came about because we have a lot of DVD tutorials that many of you have taken advantage of, but lots of you don't have DVD players anymore in your devices. Our phones, our laptops, our, our um, tablets don't have DVD players. So we needed to come up with an alternative solution that gave you all of our tutorials in a streaming video format. So that meant I needed to find another software platform that accommodated all of these gigantic video files. And 
That is how uh, SoFitAcademyOnline.com was developed and originated. And once we got that up and running, it was a perfect opportunity for us to then do design and sew-alongs. So about a year and a half ago, we started doing uh, our Sew Simple series. We, had, we started off with three Sew Simple blouses, then Sew Simple three pants, then we did Sew Simple three shirt designs, and this past fall, we did three Simple skirt designs, along with all of our other design and sew-alongs that are already in there. And what I do in these design and sew-alongs is I literally take you by the hand, I take you into your body blueprint, and I show you exactly what line to draw and when to draw it so that you can accomplish that specific design that happens to be the topic of that design and sew-along. And it is all those design and sew-alongs that are on sale for two days for our Valentine's gift to you. So. Thursday, uh, what's today? Today is Friday. Um, the actual newsletter on this is going to come out tomorrow. And because all of you are watching here today, you can start purchasing at the Academy today and getting your design and sew-alongs. Now, some of the um, uh, sew-alongs have been put already in a discounted bundle. There isn't a further discount for those. So it's just the independent ones and you can choose any of the independent ones and you must put them in the shopping cart independently. So let's say that you want to get the little black dress so along. You'll have to put that in your cart and then add Val 20 just before the pay button. And there is a little question right above the pay button that says, do you have a coupon code? or something like that. Do you have a discount code? You've got to click that little phrase and then it'll open up a window and you're going to put in VAL20. You must do that because if you click the pay button and add your credit card details, I am sorry but there aren't going to be um, any refunds if you miss the discount. And that's because Last year in March, all of the online bank processors started charging uh, refund fees to us merchants, and I simply can't. I'd have to charge you the refund fee, then that would almost negate your VAL20, and it's just a nightmare. So please, before you click pay, add in your coupon code VAL20. All righty, and uh, so the... Next thing that I would like to do is go into the Q&A section. I know, well, I, I shouldn't say I know because I haven't been following your questions while I've been giving the lesson, but we are going to move into our question and answer period right now. I'm hoping that uh, our distributors have been able to answer your questions as I've been going through the lesson, and uh, we're going to take just a short less than one minute break, David's going to bring me over the laptop so that I can answer your questions now. One of the questions was, can I tell, us, tell you about the top that I have on? This is called the Caprizio top, and it is also one, <coughs> excuse me, one of our design and sew-alongs that you'll find in SoFitAcademyOnline.com. So it's a um, princess line, but it's got some asymmetry to it, and then just a very easy draped neckline that I've made a big tube and attached to a lowered neckline. Uh, let's see, what have we got here for questions? Um, uh, 
Okay. Okay, this is a question from Helen Tucker. If the shoulder seam is okay at the neckline, but needs to move forward at the shoulder point and needs a square shoulder tune-up. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, do the square shoulder tune-up first because the square shoulder tune-up is going to affect both the front and the back. Actually, both of them are going to. And then do your rocked forward shoulder bone next after that. Um, question, how do we sign up for the pants class? Uh, why don't I talk about that right now? In um, surefitdesigns.com, there is a link that says live events. So if you go surefitdesigns.com, it'll be home, then shop, then international, and the next thing says live events. When you drop down the first link that's there is March 20th and you'll read all of the details there. This is going to be a worldwide presentation, Surefoot Designs all around the world. We are going to be broadcasting three different times. 9 a.m. is our first broadcast and we're going to be hitting all of the European countries, UK, Ireland, Scandinavia, EU, as well as South Africa. In London, that will be approximately 3 p.m. in the afternoon. In Johannesburg, South Africa, that will be 5 p.m. The reason we're broadcasting three different times is because right now in Australia, you've either had to get up at 3 a.m. in the morning to watch this one, or in South Africa, you've had to stay up really late. So we're going to do our first broadcast for EU countries, uh, Europe, UK, Ireland, Scandinavia, we're going to do all of that at 9 o'clock in the morning. Please check your local time zone. Then we're going to broadcast again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and that's going to be for the USA and Canada. USA and Canada are all in the same time zones. We have four different time zones in the USA. It's going to be 2 p.m. that afternoon, which will be 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern. And then for... Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia, we're going to broadcast at 7 p.m. that night. We're going to be really busy that day, and it's March the 20th. And that will be approximately 11 a.m. in the morning, but Sunday morning, March the 21st, in Australia. So, again, please check with your distributors. When you get to that page in my website, you'll see all this information that I'm talking about right now. You will want to register on your distributor's website. And as you come down in that information, you will see that I've listed all of the broadcast times plus the register here link for all of the different countries. For the United States, your registration page is right at the very bottom of that information page. As I said earlier, it's only $15. You're going to be getting very focused information on the pants and you're going to be getting your registration fee back in gifts. So that's where to go to register. Um, let me go back and see what other questions I can answer. This is a question from Lorraine Brassette. When you move the sleeve cap notch to line up with the forward shouldered adjustment, wouldn't you need to make additional adjustments to the rest of the sleeve seam? Well, not really, Lorraine, because in theory, you're, you're only moving that sleeve cap notch. So if you've moved for a quarter of an inch forward for a shoulder adjustment, if you move that cap notch forward a quarter of an inch, that should be all that you need to do. Now, when I say should, it's always a good idea to measure from your cap notch to your underarm in the front and cap notch to underarm in the back. The back should have a maximum of a half to five eighths of an inch of ease. A little less is good when you're working with something like this, a cotton poly. Um, and in the front should have around three eighths to half an inch of ease. 
There is another article that I highly recommend that you read, and it's in the article library. It's called Sleeves and All Their Quirkiness, and it gives you lots of really detailed information about how to measure your cap in comparison to the armhole and how you can make changes on the cap, top of the cap and the sides of the cap if you need to. So that's a really, really good article to read. Here's a question from Linda Brown. What is the best way to do a broad shouldered adjustment in a shirt with a yoke? Well, the yoke should not have any effect to the broad shoulder. So if you're broad shouldered, and when, I, when you say shirt, I'm assuming that you mean our shirt kit. When you measure in our shirt kit, you measure from, sh whoa, it just about fell over on me here. When you measure for your shirt kit measurements, you measure from shoulder bone to shoulder bone. So the broader shouldered you are, the wider your measurement is going to be. And because you start off with shirt back in drawing the shirt pattern, whatever you measure, how narrow or broad you are, should be the, the dimension that you come out with in your pattern. So there really is no adjustment to make because when you work with SureFit Designs, the whole purpose of it is that we take accurate measurements and then when you draw your pattern, you have the fewest number of tune-ups to do possible because your measurements were accurate. Then when you do a yoke, you just cut across wherever you want that yoke to be. So there shouldn't be any further changes that you need to do. Um, this is from Sue M. How does one know how to add or subtract for a forward shoulder adjustment? Well, once again, when we take a look at the shoulder line on your body, and um, in the fall, one of the things that Judith Johnson, our UK distributor, produced for us was a photo guide um, to help you take photos that make the most sense to us when we're helping to evaluate the fit on your body. And one of the things that we suggested was doing the back in a different color from the front and have a third color for the sleeves. That way we can really see where this shoulder line is sitting. So if you have a forward thrusted shoulder bone, your bone is going to be poking out like right here. And if your shoulder seam line is sitting back here, all we need to do is measure from where it's sitting to where your shoulder bone is, and that tells you how much you need to move forward for that shoulder bone that's rocked forward. So I hope that cleared that up for you. If you alter the shoulder seam, do you need to alter the bust point? This was from Janet Madison. Excellent question, Janet. All of these questions are excellent. All right, so when you, let me just take this tape measure. When you measure from your shoulder seam down to your apex, remember that when you do measurements, you are primarily measuring over top of just your foundation garments. You likely aren't going to have a bodice on. You might just have your bra or camisole on. So when you say, I think that this is where my shoulder seam would ride, you may or may not be correct. So you measure from where you think your shoulder seam line is, and you measure down to your apex or the highest point of your bust. So, and I'll just use this mannequin as an example. The distance there is nine and a half inches down to the apex. But if I move this shoulder seam forward a quarter of an inch, then in theory, I should be only nine and a quarter inches long in the um, distance from my shoulder to apex. However, then you beg the question is, did I measure from where my shoulder seam really should sit on my body? So sometimes this is a situation where you really do have to sew your first test bodice 
And then if you need a shoulder seam, tune up, move it forward, sew up one more test bodice, and then look to see if your bust art is in the correct position. It may or may not be based on how accurate your initial measuring was from your shoulder seam line down to your apex. So I hope that answer made sense for you. All right, here's another interesting and good question from Llewellyn, Llewellyn Friars. How do you adjust if you have a back shoulder hump due to scoliosis? So with scoliosis, you have one shoulder, or you might have both shoulders with a, a hump, but usually one is more dominant than the, than the other because your back is, backbone is uh, distorted because of the scoliosis. Typically what you're going to do is make sure that you have shoulder darts, and I had a lady come to one of my retreats um, a number of years ago who had, who had had multiple shoulder surgeries. And one of her shoulder bones was out here and the other was somewhere totally different on the other shoulder seam line. So we needed to make an asymmetrical pattern. One shoulder dart pointed one direction and the other shoulder dart pointed the other direction. And we fit this area. If you need more fullness in this area, then you're going to need to have a wider shoulder dart on one side than on the other side. The other thing that you might need is to have a curved center back seam. And you may curve the side of the seam um, where your uh, hump is, you may curve that a little bit more than on the side without the hump. And you most likely are going to end up with a seam down the center of your back. But keep in mind that seams are intended to help fit the fabric to your body. So don't be afraid to use them. But that would be my recommendation, is to have a, a right and a left side back with different sizes of darts and more shaping on the side where you've got the most dominant curvature. Um, let's see here. Um, Leanne Z, is there a good way to do a rounded back, forward shoulder, and sloping shoulder? My son has them all. Well, yes, basically, Leanne, you're just going to do exactly what I've talked about, is you would do, if he's got a rounded back and it's severely rounded, you're going to need to put a center back seam in. And in one of my broadcasts, I talked about that, and I, I think it was the very first one that I did in January. I can't exactly remember. You'll have to go back and look at the, the um, playlist on broadcasts. But I talked about doing a rounded back process in the back of a bodice. You could do it in a shirt as well. And then you'll do exactly what I've shown you today, is move the shoulder line forward and then slope it. So you just do them in order. And that would be the process that I would recommend. Um, this lady, Linda Brown, is asking for a clarification on, she said, broad shoulder with yoke, which I talked about, problem is across the shoulder blade, not at the top. Um, narrow shoulder adjustment first, then need to fix for broad shoulders. Well, if I'm understanding your question correctly, the breadth is across where the shoulder blades are, not necessarily up here. So in this situation, you are going to take the arm side and bring it out flatten out the curve, give some more width in the reach room right in that center portion of the armhole area. And in the Sherfit Designs Learning Center in the video library, if you go to 
D for dresses, and then uh, into the fitting section, there's one called scooping the armhole. Scooping it, of course, would be to get rid of excess width. You're going to do the reverse, which is flattening that arm side curvature to give extra width across the back. Once you've done that, then you would cut your yoke going across. All right, I do believe that that is the last of the questions. I've now talked for about an hour, a little bit longer than I intended to talk, which is usually my case. I usually tend to go a little bit over time, and I hope that you all are okay with that. I love getting your questions, and you are very, very welcome to email myself or your specific di uh, distributor if you have additional questions. So I would like to just uh, encourage you to sign up for our pants broadcast. It is primarily for newbies. So those of you who are new to SureFit designs, have not used a pant kit yet, or maybe haven't used any of the SureFit designs yet, the um, pants pattern or the pants presentation is called Pants Perfection. We're going to be doing basics through uh, drawing the pattern, fitting issues, as well as designing with the pants pattern. And uh, so when I say it's primarily for newbies, that's who I'm going to focus on. But if you've got a pants pattern, you already own it and haven't opened it up, this is a perfect opportunity to join us and follow along. But of course, any of you who have already drawn your pants pattern and just want some additional information, you also are welcome to join the March 20th event. And we are starting to take registrations for that now. I know we're a month and a bit out. So you're going to be put on a major mailing list and then approximately 24 hours ahead of time, you're going to be sent a very specific link that is going to give you the viewing platform in YouTube. All of these live chats are free. <clears throat> and it's, I give you the link ahead of time and you can just go there at your leisure and watch them. But for the March 20th Pants broadcast, that now is a paid event. And so the link is only going to be available to those who have registered previously. So I encourage you to join us. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot on March the 20th. And keep in mind, we're broadcasting three times so that we can go all around the world in a time zone that is more suitable to your lifestyle so that you don't have to be up you know, at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning or stay awake really, really late at night. I would like to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. There is just a little red subscribe button underneath this video. And you know, when you do subscribe, you are going to be uh, receiving notifications of more broadcasts. You'll also be able to set yourself reminders of when our chats are coming up. And I encourage you to leave comments in YouTube as well. Again, I love to receive your feedback. And um, I just, I think it's great. All of the inspiration that you provide for me as well as for everybody else that is working with SureFit Designs. I would like to thank you so much for joining this live chat today. I wish you all a very happy Valentine's and remember to stay and watch that short little video on truing up the pattern. Thank you so much for participating today. I hope to see you all in March. Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs. Some of you know me as Glenda the Good Stitch. In this video, I'm going to talk about truing and perfecting the pattern. And that means that we're going to be comparing seam lengths and we're going to be comparing one seam going into another seam and what we should be looking for in our finished pattern. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're working with a bodice pattern, a pant pattern, a shirt pattern. The concept is the same. I'm going to demonstrate on a bodice pattern. But first of all, I'd like to take a look at a couple of uh, conceptual ideas here. We're going to be talking about the neckline curve. So as we take a look at this little illustration, we're going to just say, first of all, that's center front, and we're not going to do a curve right off the bat. We're going to do a square neck, and this is the rest of the, the 
chest area coming up into the shoulder line and there's the shoulder. So because we typically work on half a pattern and center front is often on the fold of the fabric, we need to make sure that that join or connection at center front is exactly square or 100% trued and perfect. So when I open up that example, you can see on my square neck, I am coming straight across up to the neck point and then into the shoulder line. So let's take a look at another example here. A jewel neck, that's the high round neck that we typically, excuse me, that we typically start off with on um, a uh, block or what I call your body blueprint. So there I have center front and there's the shoulder line. Now we do need this little space here to be at 90 degrees, even if it's just for a quarter of an inch on each side. So one handy way to set that up, take the line drafter and do a little cross mark, then you know it's exactly at 90 degrees. Then what you're going to do to draw the neckline is take the designing stylus and now I'm going to draw what is a correct curvature coming into that 90 degree angle and I'm doing it with the designing stylus tool. Now as I take this and fold it on center front and cut my neck curve and cut the shoulder line Now, when I open this one up, you can see that I've got a nice continuation of that curvature going across the front of my chest, and that's what you want. So, now let me show you what some of the problems can be when you're drawing neck curves. Whoops, I don't want to fold that just yet. I'll use the designing stylus, and I'm going to draw a curve that would actually give it more of a V-neck, and so this is why it's really important to understand this whole concept. I do have my little straight line there, actually. I just did it in pencil. But you're going to see when I cut this, how even though I think I drew a curve, and I did draw a slight curve, when I cut this now, and then open it back up so that I create the mirror image, now what I've, I've formed is more of a v-neck formation. And so that's the kind of thing that you want to avoid. When people will write to me and say, my neck is too tight, one of the very first things I'll say is, did you get a deep enough curve on your neckline? And then we'll take a look at the opposite of the v-neck. And it's a really tight curve that flips up at center front. And to do that, I'm going to use our little tool, the designer's companion, which actually is great for all the tight little tiny curves that you might do on collars or pockets or cuffs. But I'll draw that curve because this situation can definitely happen as well. So now when I fold this one in half and I cut this, now this actually looked like a fairly good curve coming into center front, but you'll see what the problem is that I've created by coming up too high at center front. So when I open up this one, you can see that I've created a dip up like this, and so that wouldn't sew together well. In stitching, you'd be wanting to flatten that out. So now let's take a look at some actual pattern pieces now that you've seen the conceptual information that is the basis for truing our patterns. For convenience sake and because of how small my table is here, I'm going to start with a sleeve pattern. And one of the first things I'll do is check the curve coming in at the underarm to the underarm seam. And so keeping in, in mind the concept that I just taught you, if this is too shallow, I'll get a V coming up the other side when it all gets joined together. So I'll take the line drafter, lining up one dominant line with the underarm curve, and I'll make a little cross mark here, like this, 
And that's a, a, a pretty decent right angle that I formed right there. So that one I likely wouldn't change. Let's see what happens on the other side of the underarm of the sleeve pattern. This one also is not bad, but I'll turn this a little bit more towards the, the camera here so that you can see. I would be inclined to flatten that curve out just a little bit more coming into that underarm. I haven't changed this point, but it's when I sew these two seams together that the curves will be a nice continuation and that's what we want to achieve. One other thing that I'll point out to you on a sleeve pattern is if you were to extend the green line coming up like this, as we take a look at that cap curve, and now you're seeing 100% of the curve here, you want a nice continuation of that cap curve. You don't want it too pointed like that because that would not sew into the shoulder line well. So all things to be aware of when you are truing a pattern. Now let's bring up this one. And this we've got here is the, the front. And I've just done a, a combination of the bodice front being attached to the skirt as if you were making a blouse. So the first thing to check is the neckline. So as I take the line drafter and line it up, this actually is a nice 90 degree angle right there. So there's nothing wrong with that curved jewel neckline. Now, as we take a look at the shoulder, at the neck point here, you're going to say oh, that's not a 90 degree angle. And you're right, it isn't. But it's going to have a continuation going into the back neck curve. And I'll show you that in a moment because that's another um, way to double check your pattern and make sure that it's true. But let's check the armhole going into the shoulder line. Taking the line drafter and lining up the straight edge of it, right at the shoulder point, this little beginning part of the arm side is exactly at 90 degrees. And that's what you want before you begin the curve for the arm side and the underarm. Taking a look at the side seam, if I line that up right here, and I'm just going to move the line drafter over so I've got a little bit more of a visual here. Again, if I drew a 90 degree right there, that's perfect. I don't need to make any changes to the underarm. And that's all, well, and this, of course, at the hem level, you want to make sure that that's a perfect 90 as well, if that's the style of hem you're using. And so we'll just line up the line drafter, and of course, that's a perfect 90 degrees. So that's all um, good, and there's no changes that I would need to make on that particular piece. I'll just slide this over and bring up the back, and let's take a look at the initial steps here. Using the line drafter, I'll take a nice straight line right here to the center back, and this also is 90 degrees, and of course, I'm showing you what is correct, but if it isn't, you obviously do need to erase and make that change so that it comes in straight, if that's what your intention is. And I'll check this shoulder going into the armhole, and that, of course, is at 90 degrees. Now I'm going to take a look at the underarm. And so we'll put a nice dominant line of the line drafter on the side seam, and what you're seeing here is not perfection. This is this curvature is too shallow. So when it connects with the underarm on the front, you're not going to have that smooth continuation of the curve. So I would want to redraw that and then flatten out the underarm section of that curve. And I know the hemline is straight as well. So that's how you uh, true and perfect these curves going into a straight line. Now, the next thing that you'll want to check in your patterns 
is that your stitching lines are the same length, particularly side seam to side seam. And let's see, what do I want to do here first? I think I'll do the side seam from the front to the back. So I'm going to take the back pattern and lay it over top of the front pattern. And I'm going to line up my underarm points like this and mark a mark that indicates the top leg of the dart because when that dart is sewn out on the front of the bodice, then you're going to move that line down to the bottom leg of the dart as if you've sewn the dart out on the bodice. My waistlines line up exactly and my hem level lines up exactly. But I hope you can see this. I'm going to move this hip line into more of the direct view of the overhead camera. When I line this up, you can see that my curves for the side seams aren't identical. And you really should check that and make them identical. So in this case, what's likely happened is when I was drawing the pattern, I likely just used a slightly different curve on the designing stylus on the back than I did on the front obviously not realizing that I'd done that. So what you want to do is make one wider or the other one narrower, or you can split the difference. And of course, at home, you're going to be using a regular pencil for all your marks. So when you need to come and erase this, it's going to be very easy to do on the tracing vellum because your tracing vellum isn't going to go into shreds or holes. It's a very durable see-through product, as so many of you know. So erase one line, make it the same as the other. And one other thing I should point out to you, you'll notice that I don't have any seam allowances on here. And I didn't for a very specific reason, because if I need to make a change, I want to do it without seam allowances because it's less lines to erase. And also, you're getting a much cleaner view and vision of where some of your little discrepancies might be in the pattern. One other thing that I want to take a look at is the shoulder line. So in order to check the shoulder line lengths, I'm going to put the front over top of the back like this. And my red pencil is underneath there. Let me just grab it because I need it and line up shoulder point to shoulder point and then I'm going to make a mark right here indicating the side leg of that back shoulder dart then I'm going to take that line and move it over to the other side of the shoulder dart because what I want to check is that my shoulder seam lines are exactly the same length and they are. Again, if they weren't, this is the time to change them. And one last thing that I would like to show you is looking at your neckline curve. So I'm going to flip this over and we're going to pretend like we're sewing the shoulder line together. Of course, the dart would have already been sewed out of the blouse back. And since I know already the shoulder lines are exactly the same length, I know this is where my neck points are going to meet on the pattern. And you can see that from the back neck curve to the front neck curve, that's a beautiful continuation of the neckline curvature. And that is why these points did not need to be at a 90 degree angle. So there are a lot of tips for you in truing and perfecting your pattern. And I do encourage you to do that. As I said, do it before you add your seam allowances and then come back and add your 5 8 inch seam allowances on afterward, which of course can be easily done with the seam allowance markings on the designing stylus and with our newest essential tool, the line drafter, we also have 5 8 inch seam allowances on there as well. Well, I really sincerely hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, I do invite you to join our worldwide community of like-minded seamstresses using SureFit Designs. You know we have three ways to bring you into our community. Number one, 
please make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We now have over 200 free educational videos to help you with fitting, designing, and sewing. Number two, make sure that you join our newsletter list and you're going to find my newsletter sign up form at the bottom of all my web pages and my website is www.surefitdesigns.com and when you sign up there are four free gifts to get you started. And last but certainly not least, we have a great Facebook group. It's Facebook um, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash surefit designs we have over 5,000 users worldwide who ha are having fun sharing their projects helping one another and of course I chime in and answer the questions as well so make sure you join our community and thank you so much for watching